but let's say we put you in charge at Harvard. Yeah. What changes would you make? <laughs> <laughs> you appoint the board. You are the board. You and so, your mother. Oh, man. <laughs> this is such a great question. Um, can, I, can I start at the beginning? Start at the beginning. Okay. Uh, I would start by going... Uh, I would establish a set of baseline criteria for admissions, <clears throat> and then I would have a lottery after that. Uh, so if you are someone who has, you're in the top 2% of your high school class, or whatever, we can 5%, whatever cutoff we want, following test, test scores at a certain point, whatever cutoff we want, some minimum number of other things you do, you just go into the pot, and we're pulling out names. Uh, I would, uh, I'd probably triple or quadruple the size in the next 10 years. Okay. Open campuses, uh, uh, probably two other campuses in the United States, one overseas. Uh, I would, uh, you know, I had this idea that, <clears throat> I'm not sure how you do it, but where I think that it would be really, really useful to, um, uh, to ban uh, graduates of elite colleges from ever disclosing that they went to an elite college. <laughs> and this, <laughs> you, it's not a joke. It's deadly serious. Because what it does is it wonderfully clarifies the decision for the student of whether they want to go to an elite college. So you, want to, you don't want the kid going to Harvard who just wants the brand name Harvard. You want the kid to go to Harvard who genuinely believes that he or she can get an education there that they can't get anywhere else. Right? I want that kid. So if I say, you can come here and get a world-class, the greatest education in the world, but after you graduate, you can never tell anyone where you went, then I'm, I'm weeding out all the Louis Vuitton <laughs> shoppers, right? And I'm getting the true scholars. So I, if there's a kid out there who says, there's the certain professor, one of my oldest friends is a professor at Harvard, Terry Martin. Huge fan of yours, by the way, Tyler. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> Terry, if there's a kid out there who says, I want to take a, I read Terry's book. He's read a couple of books. I want to do Soviet studies. I want to study with Terry. That's the kid I want, right? I will, and I don't actually, I'm willing to go to any lengths to get that kid. I'll give him a, I'll cut him a break. I'll keep him out of the lottery. You know, I'll do all kinds of things. But you want that kind of, you want, if you're running a, a truly elite college, what you want to select for is someone who is the, ki the kids who are most powerfully motivated to leverage the, the institutional assets of the institution. The, oh, I'm sorry, the academic, the intellectual assets of the institution, not the brand assets of the institution. And now a truly important question. How would you treat the faculty? <laughs> well, you know, there's a, Really interesting site, and I've forgotten to my eternal discredit who did it, but um, that looks at trends in educational spending and points out that educational spending has gone like, higher ed spending has gone like that. Um, the share of higher ed dollars that goes to faculty salaries um, when you do all the kind of, it's basically been flat for 50 years. Um, so you'd pay us more. Oh, yeah, I absolutely would pay okay. you more. I mean, I, I don't say that because I'm at a university talking to a professor <laughs> and I'm the son of a professor. Um, I say that because, uh, uh, because it seems crazy to, to, have to put academics in the kind of professional firmament. It seems crazy to have them losing ground to other professions when you would think that the importance in a... In a uh, modern society of having um, world-class faculty would be greater. And to the extent, I mean, I'm not saying that if you pay academics properly more, you're going to get better academics necessarily. But I do think it's not a bad idea if you want to reward um, people going into that profession. 